Hey guys, in this video, we are going to learn how can you create a weather app where you can see the temperature of a current city if given as an input using Python and we are going to use an API. This is fairly easy if you follow me along and start creating your own Python code. First of all, let's see a demo of what you are going to learn today. Here is the code that you can see on my screen. This might look quite complicated, but I'm going to make it quite easy. First of all, let me run this and show you what is the data we are going to get. You can see it is asking me to enter the city name. So let me enter some city name from India, let's say Goa. The moment I do it, it does an API call and this is the output that I've received. The current temperature of Goa is 26.21 and it's overcast clouds so it is also giving a bit of description of the weather as you have seen the demo let's follow completely till the end so that it becomes quite easy and you can develop this kind of an app on your own so let's get started the very first step is to install the required libraries for that we will use the command pip install and the library name the library name is request Hit on install and this is going to install the entire library within few minutes. As I have already installed, to check if it is installed or not, I am going to simply say show and write the library name and hit on enter. You can see on my screen, it clearly says that I have the required library already installed on my computer. Now the question arises, what is the use of this library? The use of the library is to make the HTTP request or to work with the API where we can get some data. That is where you need this specific library. Let's start coding. The very first thing is we have to import the request library which you have just installed. The next part is to ask the user input for the city name for which you would like to search the temperature input from the customer. Or the user right to do that I'm going to write a variable called city equals to and I'm going to say input and in this I'm going to ask enter a city name the next part is we have to get the API details for this example I'm going to use a very specific API from open weather map API Open your browser and simply type open weather map and hit on enter. And you can see this is the site where you have to get into. Once you have logged into the site, here you would have a sign in button. You can use a sign in button to log into the specific home page of the app. So here I have already logged in to this specific app. Once you sign in, it is going to ask you to confirm your email address. And once the email is confirmed, you are going to receive an email. Let me show you the email. In this email, you will receive something called API key. Once you have confirmed, after that you are going to receive an API key. And the API key is something we need to use. This is the one part, the API key we have to use. The second part, we also need the URL for the site. So here if you see on my screen, until here, I need this URL for my python coding you can also get the api key by clicking on the name and then below here you would find my api keys now for this i'm going to create two different variables called the base url for the api i'm saying base url equals to and i'm going to copy paste the api link that i have spoken about i'm going to copy until this weather Right, I'm going to copy this, come to my code and going to paste it here. And the only modification I need here is simply type https colon forward slash forward slash. After this, let's create a variable which is going to hold my API key. So I'm going to say API key equals to and I'm going to copy paste the API key from my email. The next thing, any API key or any API request that you are going to do it requires certain values as input like they are called parameters the parameters are nothing but 
inputs inputs for the api so how do you get this parameter details let me show you for this i am on the home page of open weather map uh, website and here there is something called api click on this api now if you scroll down slightly scroll down there is something called current weather data here there is something called api doc click on this api doc now once you are on the api doc slightly scroll down here you find various parameters so one of the parameter that we have to send is the city name now on the right hand side you would find something called built in api request by city name just click on this link now if you see there is something called q so q is one of the parameter using which you can pass a city name so let's see how to practically really use it within the python code now for this i am going to create a dictionary variable and i'm going to name it as a equals to and dictionaries are always created using curly braces here i am going to write the very first parameter called q and in this and you have to write it in lower case how the, the exact way it is defined in the api documentation and i'm going to say colon because it's a dictionary and i'm going to pass the city name here so the q is going to hold the city name now the next parameter that we have to send for this just scroll up where we have initially gone and here you have call current weather data now here i need to pass the api id which is also a verification so why you need a api id it is going to hold the api key this is the parameter name it is going to hold the api key it is more like authenticating you so when you are making a request to the api it understand who is the user through the key just like a password right similar way it is a key which is going to authenticate you to access the data from the api so for this i am going to use this one called app id i'll go to my code and within double quote you have to always mention the specific parameter and i'm going to say colon and here i am going to pass the variable because i know there is a variable which is holding the data and remember after, because it's a dictionary it has to be differentiated by a comma here so i'm putting a comma here and the third thing that i want the temperature can be shown in degree celsius or you can also see it in fahrenheit so, so this there is a parameter called units so let me show you where this unit parameter is available if i go back here there is something called units in this one there are three different options available standard metric imperial now to know more i am going to click on this link it tells me if you need uh, for temperature in fahrenheit then you have to mention units equals to imperial if you need in celsius then you have to mention units equals to metric so this is what i need so i'll copy this go back to the code and within double quote you have to mention this because this is not a variable so now you have created an input that the api is going to accept now the real challenge comes how do i finally make a api call api call or request right how do i make a final call so you have got all your input data ready now let's see how this can be done remember initially we have used a library called imported a library called request so we will start using it so i am going to say request and there are a couple of methods so here i want to get the data so the method name or the function name is called get now in that i am going to pass the url so i will say the variable which contains my url which is base url this is the variable and then i don't have to pass the api key city name differently because a is the variable which contains all this data my api id what what is the city name units all of this it contains here so i'll simply put a comma and i'm going to pass this a variable so my job is done now you will ask where am i going to store this because this is a get request so here i'm going to create a variable called response equals to and i'm going to hold this data now let's see what is the output if i'm going to print a response and let's run it so what is the uh, first thing it has asked me for a city name so let's enter the city name go on and it is saying 200 so 200 means remember when you are making an api call 200 means it is a successful call but again it is not giving me any data so where the data is gone so let me show you how do you really see the data 
Now to see the data, let me erase this print response. I am going to create a variable called data equals to now the responses can come in various different forms. You can have XML, HTML responses, JSON responses. So here we will deal with JSON kind of a response. So what is this JSON response? How it appears? I am going to show you. Okay. So simply write this and do a print data. Okay. And let me run this. Let's enter some other name. Let's say I am saying Mumbai. Hit on enter. So you can see it has given me some response. Now it is a huge long response. Okay. If I scroll back, it's a huge, very huge one, right? And it doesn't make any sense. Now it has got so many things. How do I really make it readable? It is not, it is readable, but again, it, it's a long string. So how do I make it human readable, right? More easy. So for that, I'll be importing. It's a default library. You don't have to install it as such. In case it doesn't recognize, then you have to. Otherwise, I think it is a default library. So I'm saying import JSON. Now here, I would like to see the data in a proper way. Okay. So for that, I'm going to use the library name called JSON. Dot. There is a function called dumps. It is going to beautify the data. So the data is coming in one liner, right? So I'm going to beautify the data. So I'm going to pass this data, which is having one liner data and I'm going to say comma and I want to put some indent indent means kind of a space and properly it should look so I'm going to pass some value as a three now if I'm going to print this you will see how beautifully the data would appear let me run this let's give Bengaluru okay now you can see how nicely the data has come now this becomes completely human readable right you can see whether uh, ID, longitude, latitude, um, and then it says scattered clouds, and then uh, temperature is 26.17, right? All this proper data, entire data is their country, India, and then ID, city name is Bengaluru, uh, COD 200 means, uh, status code 200 means successful, right? Okay, so there's a huge amount of data, but I am not going to deal with the entire data. I need a very specific data from the entire frame. Maybe I need this description and I need this temperature. This is the two data I need, let's say. Now in that case, how do I really ensure I am able to pull only the specific data that I need? Okay, so for this, let's keep it slightly aside so that I can see this, how it is written and exactly pull this. Now, how do you print it? So this one you have understood, right? Okay. We actually don't need this at the moment. I'm going to remove it. This is just to get this kind of output. So I don't need it. I'm going to remove it. Now, I just want to print the description, let's say. So how do I print it? Simple say print. Okay. What contains your entire response? This data contains entire response, right? So I'm going to say data. And then inside this data, if you see, this is this is this is a kind of a dictionary right anywhere you find this this is a json file defined like this so it's more like a dictionary which contains the key and some values key and some values now anywhere you find this kind of a square bracket so this is a key whether is the key so i will say look at it one by one we will go here i am going to say whether so i'll copy this and within quotes i'm going to paste it okay whether now anywhere you find this kind of a square bracket square means what array right list so now once it you know it is a list now if you see any array or a list right any list will have an index number so in this array how many elements are there only one element is there this is one category of element so this is in the zeroth index if you have multiple such things then you can name it zero one two three like that so this is only only one element within the square bracket I'm saying okay this is the only one single element that I have now for that I'm going to simply say zero because it is there in the zeroth index okay zeroth index means it is going to represent this much of data now inside this zeroth index right first we went to data inside data I want to check for the weather so I've written weather in square bracket and inside weather I want to check the index number zero that means this is the data and inside that I need this description so all I have to do 
simply put a square bracket double code and paste description now look at the output this time because we are printing only the description right so let me also keep the uh, previous print where i had printed like this right so that i need to refer it again and again so i will say print json dot i said dumps you remember this dumps and then inside this i have passed this data comma indent some value i will pass indent equals to three so this is what we had written so now look at what should be the output of the line number 22 if i'm going to run it again let's give some other name let's say london okay so london now if you see uh, for the print we have got the entire json let's scroll down and here it says scattered clouds this is for the line number 22 now if you look at the description it has the same thing right scattered clouds and the same output i am able to fetch it only that one line i need so i got this output getting it so this is one thing and the other thing that i also need is the temperature right this is the temperature i need which is 23.97 so how do i print it again remember it's quite pretty simple okay it might appear complicated but it's not the very first thing i will say data and then because data holds everything and then there is the key called main i will simply say main this you can just copy this double quote main done and then inside that there is something called temperature so there is no square bracket here this main has only this element only when the square bracket comes you are mentioning the index number otherwise you don't have to when you see the curly braces so this is one entire element inside that i need the temperature so for that i will simply say temp done now look at the output what's going to happen uh, give me some other other name uh, okay let's keep it as uh, delhi okay now if you see there are two things we have got haze and 32.95 so from where it is coming the haze is coming from the description great and the temperature is coming from this main temperature 30.05 which is matching so finally what we need we have got it so what we will do instead of a print we'll put some variable here and i'm going to say uh, this is a description i'll use a simple variable called d you have to actually elaborate your variables but again you know, just to keep it simple uh, i'm writing like this then i will say t equals to and remove this so now what happened t contains the temperature d contains the description now let's say i would like to print something so i will say uh, print now this is very useful okay anytime you would like to print variables inside your sentence just use this f string okay format format that f means format and here i'm going to say the current so this becomes quite easy to write okay so i will say the current uh, temperature of the now the city variable you can mention something like this so within your code you are mentioning the variables using the format string of the city so and so is what contains your temperature the t variable i'll say t and it's i'm going to mention the d so it will have the description d okay so everything is done let's do a final run and let me enter a name of the city bengaluru now you can see the output said the current temperature of the bengaluru is 26.17 and it's scattered clouds okay you can just modify the sentences quite quite a bit you know based on your need but again we are good so this print that we have done for the entire json is not required anymore so we can leave it as it is so finally you can see how nicely we have written our python code quite easy if you follow along so please try it out and if you have done it please comment complete it thank you guys for watching we are going to meet once again in our next video till then take care bye bye